Hi, Tom Warrender from Classroom Medics here. To use this video, you need to download the resource pack, and you can get this from one of two places. You can get it from our website, if you go to the free resources link in the top right corner, um, you can put your details in and you can download this resource as well as many others, or you can go to the Times Education Supplement resource site, the TESS resource site, log in if you have an account, and from there you can search for me, which is Tommy Wazza, uh, that's it just there, Tommy Wazza, um, and you'll see all my resources on there as well. Uh, in the resource pack you will get a written version of this uh, test so if you don't have access to the video you can just follow the instructions on here and that will tell you how to do the test. You'll also get a result sheet which you can give your students and on here you have a table to put their results in and the graph that they're going to be using and all this will make sense after you've watched the rest of the video. In the pack as well you will get a set of ECGs um, you'll get ECGs from three patients and each patient has two ECGs so this is one set okay there's one and there's another one so what you could do is you could give uh, split your class into three and give one group patient one the second group patient two and the third group patient three get them to do the calculations that we're going to show you and then see what the differences are between each group and there are differences between each group okay now if you like the video uh, please let us know what you think of it in the comment section below give it a thumbs up as well that would be absolutely brilliant and if you're on Facebook or Twitter give it a share on there because it all helps us spread the word about what we're doing. With the first trace you need to start to measure the heights of the QRS complex just like this pretty much it's from the R point of the QRS complex down to the bottom spike which is the S point of the QRS complex. Do this for all of them on the trace and once you have them all take an average and make a note of it. You then need to repeat the whole process again with the second trace or lead 2. Measure the heights of the QRS complex making a note and then take the average once again. This is the special graph we're going to use to measure the angle of the heart of the ECG. We're going to measure from the centre point out towards the plus markers on the lead 1 and lead 2 lines. Using the average value from the lead 1 trace or the first trace that we used, measure the average distance you calculated along the line and make a mark just like this. You then need to draw a vertical line straight down at that point just like this. Do exactly the same thing on the lead 2 line using the average value you calculated from the lead 2 trace. Draw another line from this mark making sure it crosses the line coming from lead 1. And then draw the third and final line from this intercept point straight through to the middle of the graph. This third line is the point we're going to use to measure the angle of the heart in the chest. To do this, you need to take your protractor and place it in the middle of the graph, just like so. The zero point we're using is actually the lead one line, that's zero, and we measure round down to the line we've drawn and measure the angle from the protractor. And in this case, the angle is around about 33 degrees. So just to very quickly explain the results that you just got from your graphs. If you imagine this is uh, your patient's heart, and what we've got is the centre here and this is the direction that we've measured coming down here okay so the result in the video was around about 33 degrees now what this means is the average direction of the electrical signals in the heart were travelling at that kind of angle okay now the electrical signals in the heart actually travel in lots of different directions they travel from the pacemaker to the AV node, down the bundle of Hiss, and then up through the Purkinje fibres which come back up around the sides of the heart. Okay, So this calculation is only a very, very rough idea of the average direction of the electrical signal, basically because the Purkinje fibres travel back upwards, but the bundle of Hiss is the main conducting part, which is kind of what we're measuring here. Okay, So this calculation is very, very rough and it's the angle at which the electrical signals travel down through the bundle of Hiss.